The craziest economic bubble I've seen in the past years, the hydrogen economy, is about to burst. That's really good news. The hydrogen economy is the idea that we'll use hydrogen to store and transport energy from intermittent renewables. It's a good idea in principle, but in practice it makes no financial sense. Investors are now beginning to see this. Plans for green hydrogen production, that's hydrogen produced from renewable energy, have been cancelled all over the place, and pipelines as well. According to the industry analysis group Westwood Insight, about a fifth of the green hydrogen projects in Europe have now been cancelled. But it's not an exclusively European phenomenon. In October, one of the largest energy companies in Australia pulled out of plans for a facility to produce hydrogen from renewables. In November, the American industrial gases company Air Products pulled out of a green hydrogen project in Texas. If a project is too airy for a company called Air Products, that should really tell you something. The Financial Times reports that stocks of some of the biggest hydrogen companies in the US and the EU have been dropping dramatically throughout the year between 30 and 50 percent. What's going on? It's reality coming back to bite. Using hydrogen to store energy sounds good at first. Combined with oxygen, hydrogen simply creates water plus energy. Zero pollution, zero guilt, but not zero problems. First as the obvious that hydrogen is a gas and when mixed with air, it's highly explosive. To be useful as energy storage, it needs to be kept... That's technically not all that difficult, but it's inconvenient and can be dangerous. Though this is the least of the problems. A bigger problem is that hydrogen, because it's such a small atom, creeps into pretty much all materials and quickly degrades them. This affects everything from storage tanks to pipes to electronics and makes maintenance costly. Then there's the issue that the fuel cells that create electricity from the hydrogen require rare metals. But the biggest problem is that it's just extremely inefficient. Using energy to create hydrogen and then converting that back into energy has an efficiency somewhere around 40% optimistically. Realistically, it's far lower because hydrogen production as a chemical process becomes less efficient the more often you have to ramp it up and down. This is unfortunate because that's exactly what we'd need to do to store energy from intermittent renewables. Basically, using hydrogen for energy storage is like trying to run a marathon in flip-flops. You'll get somewhere, but that's probably the emergency room. Yet the USA, the UK and the EU have all invested heavily into this. But now the numbers are coming in and they're not looking good. In April, the British accounting firm PricewaterhouseCoopers published a report about the status of green hydrogen projects worldwide. In this figure, you see a comparison of the plans for 2030 in light pink with reality, that's the black dots. The dots are hard to see because they're so small. To give you some numbers, the European target for 2030 is 120 gigawatts in installed capacity. Operational at the moment are 0.2. The International Energy Agency has found pretty much the same thing in a report that came out in the summer. To reach the plans for 2030, we'd have to scale up production of global green hydrogen by a factor 200 or so within six years. I say it's the craziest bubble I've seen because I don't understand how this could have happened. Yes, AI is a bubble too, and so is quantum computing. But in these cases, at least I can see why that happened. But hydrogen? One speculation for what happened is that it was a case of green hydrogen lobbyists overturning or circumventing scientific advice. The European Court of Auditors, the EU's fact-checking body, recently had a close look at the EU Commission's plans for a hydrogen economy. It found that the plans are simply unrealistic. They were never achievable. They write that renewable hydrogen targets were driven by political will rather than being based on robust 
biased analyses. Another speculation for what happened is that the lobbyism came from the fossil fuel industry. This is plausible because almost all current hydrogen production comes from natural gas. This is the so-called blue hydrogen. If we designed our economy to work with hydrogen, but then the green hydrogen doesn't come by, we'd just be using natural gas in a less energy efficient way. You can see why BP might like the idea. I don't know if either of this is true. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist and I tend to think that this wasn't so much lobbyism as what psychologists call motivated reasoning. It sounds like a good idea. People like it. They wanted to believe it. I still haven't figured out how to shorten stocks. I should really look into this. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.